Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be modeling this comb in FreeCAD. Now if we look at it, this is not a standard extrude. If we look at the edges, you see we have curvature here. We have a linear pattern, but it follows a path. And this is all done from the part design. So we know we haven't got any linear patterns that follow a path in the part design. So we have to use another workbench and we're going to show you how to use that in a safe way. Also, we can look at tangency across a mirror and how to create this curvature here. This stems from a Patreon question. and we're going to answer that using the part design workflow along with some of the features in the draft workbench. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look how we would create this. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So I'm in FreeCAD, I've started a new document, and I'm going to import the STL file that we're going to use as a reference. So let's come up to File and Import, and in the description I will place the address where I got this from. So I'll come down, you'll find the comb, and we'll open that up. And we can get an idea of how this is being built. So if I look at this comb, it looks like quite a simple shape to build. This is where some designers will come in and just basically sketch this, extrude it and create the teeth in there and walk away, job done. But when we look at this, looking at it from the side here, we can see the profile from the side is a bit more complex. And the curvature we have here makes that process of just creating a simple extrude not true to the modeling task that we have in front of us. So how do we tackle an object like this? Well, the first thing is, is actually to sketch this profile here. So from the top or the bottom, we look for symmetry and we sketch one side of this. So I'm going to come over to the sketcher and I haven't chosen my workflow yet. I know I need a sketch, but I haven't chosen a part or part design workflow. And what we're going to do is that's create a new sketch along the XY plane and hit OK. I could have moved this to the center point here where the center point lays. Let's close that and I'll right click transform. Let's come up to view and toggle axis cross so well I know where the center is. We don't have to do this, but it just makes this a little bit easier when I'm sketching. And I don't know where the center point of this is, but we're just going to guess for the time being because this tutorial is about how would we tackle such an object like this rather than precision modeling. So we have the comb. I'm going to use up the top the end point and rim point arcs and start sketching in this feature here. Now, I need to really section view through this, but because FreeCAD 0.21 and above has the ability to sketch on the reverse of the plane that you've created the sketch upon, then we don't have to worry about that. So that's that the bottom and start adding in the constraints. Now I've got, if I come over to the left hand side here, if I drop this down, I've got the auto constraints and the auto remove redundant constraints, both checked. So I'm going to hover over that, coincident to that, and start creating the necessary constraints that I need. And let's create an arc that goes all the way over to here. So we've got that in there. And let's finish this with a line and that connects up here. Actually, we need another one that closes the geometry. So this is a piece of closed geometry that I've added in here. 
and click the right mouse button to get the mouse pointer back and to cancel the tool. We can use escape if we wanted to. I'm going to use the tangent C. Now I'm not going to select two and make the tangent. I'm going to select the tool first, make sure nothing's selected. It's nothing in our hungry selection. Select the tangent C, the tangent C tool becomes enabled. And I can start making tangency across these. Hit OK. I leave the reminder on just to show newcomers that come along that this will appear and we just select OK. I don't check that box. You can if you want to. Let's select those two. So I've created tangency across all of those arcs. And right mouse button to get the mouse pointer back. And start manipulating these into place. I may want to put some constraints in here. So I'm going to take this one and this one and place a height in there to stop those moving of 28 mil. And we'll pull these into place. So this may take a little bit of time just to figure out where we are. And let's pull this down to about here. So I'm just manipulating these arcs into position. Once we're done, once we're happy with that, I'm not going to fully lock this down. Also, I'm not fully tracing the shape. This is about technique. Let's press the space bar on here and see what we've got. So we've got this now. Now that's bring back the comb, press the space bar and have a look at the comb. So if I look at this and look at this edge, we see we can't use a standard extrude. We would have to do some additional work in there. We could use a profile going across here. So I would use some kind of surfacing technique, creating profiles for a loft, but we're going to need a bottom profile, a mid or medial profile that goes along here and one that comes up here as well. And then we'll loft through those and I would make those as single open sketches. So I would use a part workflow. I'm going to use a draft and some subtractive pipes to create this feature here. So for that, I'm going to be using closed sketches. So I'm going to use the part design workflow as it'll be much quicker with that kind of workflow. Let's create a body. We don't need to create a sketch because we've already created one. Take the sketch, drag it inside the body by just dragging and dropping it on top of that active body there. So we have that. The smallest part of this comb is this part here. Let's take that comb, right click, transform, and we'll bring it down a bit. And so it sits upon this edge, this sketch here. So I'm going to extrude up to about this point. Now you see the reasons why in a minute, we take that sketch, extrude, let's go for two mil, it's going to be a bit less than that. Let's go for a millimeter, mm, perhaps a bit more, 0.5, and hit enter. So we have that there. Let's save this file, save as. I'll call this PD for part design, and we'll use comb in there. So now we need to create if we look at this what i'm doing is looking at the shape as a whole without the teeth because that's a basic array going across here and i'm visualizing now from this profile of what i need to do so i need to bring this edge upwards but maintain this height here so we're creating basically a wedge now this is where the drafting comes in. So the draft for this body. So I'm going to pick an edge. Now let's click on the comb, press the space bar. I want to basically take this edge and make this a wedge shape. So I'm going to make sure nothing's selected. Come up to the part design, apply a dresser, and I'm going to use the draft. This can be used to create the wedge shape that we need. So you see we've got a draft angle. We need to select a face. So I'm going to select the top face and we're going to change that draft angle. So you can see at the moment, it's raised the face up, which we've selected. 
and let's create this angle here, which is not right. So I need something to stop moving in here. So we we'll click the neutral plane. And I'm going to select this face. Face three has been selected. Now when I select the draft, you see nothing's happening. Let's click reverse direction. So now we're going to get something a bit different. But we've now drafted in this side, which is no good to us. Let's delete that neutral plane and change that angle. It's still changing the back angle, which is fine. Let's select neutral plane again. And the one that we want to keep still is this edge, face two. Now what happens when we start drafting? You can see it's drafting in the correct direction. So I've selected this face to draft. This is the face I want to change the angle of. And I've told it that I want this face to stay still. So when it's drafting, it only can go in one direction and that's raise up from the back. So create that wedge shape that we need. We come into the model, the comb at the moment, we can't click and press the space bar, we can't show it because we're in the middle of the drafting. So I'm just going to add a draft on here and hit okay. Click on the comb, bring it back and have a look to see how close that is. So we're getting quite close. Because we've added some draft on here, let's click on the draft, click on the data. We can change it within here. So I can change the angle within here as well. And I'm going to use the shortcut control R on Ubuntu to refresh that or whatever it is for your operating system on edit refresh. So just refreshing that as I'm changing the angle. So let's bring this down to where I want it. And I'm just looking. Remember, it's going to be a near enough representation, but not as that. So I'm going to go for that angle. Click on comb, press the space bar, and we've got our drafted angle. So we're creating the shape, slowly creating that shape. But how do we tackle? Let's click on the body and press the space bar and bring back the comb. We have this angle and we have this angle here. But if we look, we've got this curvature that runs all the way along here. We've gone all the way up to a draft. So you can see we need to curve off this edge here. So we've got to the point where we've got this shape, but we need curvature going across here. Now we could add fillets along these edges, control select in them, but we're going to get into a bit of a problem. Let's add the fillet. You see how that's taken. If we increase this fillet, we can see it's taken all the way along here, but it's the same width. So the same width fillet is 1.5 mil. Watch this point here, because when we go across here, then it will start to fail. So six fives were right, six eight. It's fine, it still hasn't crossed that point. When it crosses that point, this edge becomes redundant because it's no longer in that fillet. It's gone into error, it's gone past here and it causes this problem. This is the right curvature that we want, this type of curvature that we need. Because if we come up to the view and look at the draw style and look at the shaded, we can see that this is starting to curve in the right kind of way. But how do we create this without fillet? Let's cancel that, come up to view, draw style and flat lines. Well, the answer is a subtractive pipe. I'm going to make it a little bit easier and take this edge 
And this is going to be the path that I want to use. I'm going to come in and control select that edge like so. And because we've got the active body, I can make a subshape binder, part design, create a subshape binder. And if we've binded that edge. So press the space bar on the draft. We can see that edge is bounded in there. So if I've got the edge ready to go, that means that's a single object. It makes my life a lot easier when I come to doing the subtractive pipe because it needs a path. You can use edges. It just makes it a little bit easier because I can just drop the whole object in. I need to create a profile. So for that, I'm going to create a profile along this face here. So I'm going to select the face and create a profile. Now this may look strange because I'm going to create the profile upon this point, just a standard circle like so. This means I can move that circle by selecting the sketch, coming into the map mode, where this flat face is attached to that face too. And instead, what I'm going to do is go into the model, click on the draft, press the space bar and target this point here. To go into task, this is plain, select that, saying select in, delete what's inside, get rid of that. Make sure that's saying select in, no reference selected and select this point. The sketch will move and now if I hit OK, that's sitting upon that vertex there and it's flat against that face, which is what we want because we need to take out all of this here. If this was slanted this way, then we would have to back it off, which is not a problem. We can make this normal to this edge. Let's go for that for the time being. So now the sketch is in, I can double click it and decide on what the geometry is going to look like. I'm going to use the arc. I'm going to target this edge and this edge. If I look upon here, we've got the auto constraints, auto remove redundant constraints. So the auto constraints is when I hover over a line, I can make connection and create the arc that I want, like so. That will do. Use a trim and trim out this edge here. So we create a scraper. If I hit close and take this sketch and create subtracted pipe, I've got the sketch selected. And now we can add the object, go to model, select the binder. See that's taken, well, it looks like it's taken. The thing is, the draft there isn't hidden. So I click on the draft, press the space bar, and you see what's happened. That's scraped away that edge. But we need it bigger here. So what do we do? Let's come over to task and hit OK and set that. One thing I can do is create another sketch. Or I could clone in Stratic Pipe. I've got that sketch, press the space bar, and we can see that in there. I can clone that sketch over in the draft workbench. We got cloning tools. Take the sketch, modifications, and clone. This means that this sketch has a separate map mode, which I can use. First things first, take the sketch, drop it inside the body. We can't edit that sketch, that clone, but what we can do is scale it. Come into the scale, select the scale. Now you have to scale along the X. The Y we can leave as it is, but I'm going to scale along there as well. But always scale along the Z as well. Place a two in there to make sure that's scaled as well. Otherwise we get into problems and it won't actually take when we do the structure pipe around here. So I've got this, it's a bit bigger, well, it's a lot bigger, it's double the size. We can use 1.5 in here if we wanted to. And this one's 1 1.5, change this to 1.5, should be all right too. And well, we need to position this somewhere. So click on subtractive pipe and hide that and look at the binder, press the space bar, find that. So we've got that edge there. We want to move this sketch, or this clone, 
using the map mode, come in here, selecting, make sure that's saying selecting, there's nothing in the reference. We want to move it to this point here. We've moved it to that point. Therefore, if I hit OK and bring back the structured pipe by pressing the space bar, we can see what it's going to do. And we can make some further amendments. So it's going to take away that much. And we can take the sketch. And we can see that binder going across there. So that's great. Better mapping. So vertex reference two. We can click that and click on this edge. Let's flip around the other way. Let's select nor to edge and hit OK. Do we need map reverse? So this one here, map reverse on that clone. Set that true. There we go. Let's put it in the right position. So we got that there. Now we can make some amendments. So we'll come down to that sketch, the attachment, the position, the Y, we can move along the Y and the X, something like that, say 0.9. Okay, when you're happy and you've got that in position, come back to Strative Pipe, double click it, come down to the section transformation, drop this down to multi section, and then click Add Section. We're now going to create that pipe as a multi-section subtractive pipe. Select, select this profile and hit OK. Now let's come over to the model. Look down, our draft is still visible. Click on it, press the space bar to hide it. We are now getting the shape that we want for the comb. We see that at the end there, it's not going past this point so we may need another profile in here which is easy enough we can take the clone edit duplicate selection uncheck all of these until we just see this clone selected as is let it like this with the gray box in there let's hit okay and now we take that clone make sure it's inside the body and let's hide the subtractive pipe. Take the clone map mode, normal to edge, click on there. And the vertex, we can delete that out. That will move this binder edge up. Let's delete that as well. So it's same reference one. Click that, select this vertex. And then reference two is this edge, normal to edge. Okay, do we need to rotate it? I'm not sure. No, that's all okay. We don't need to use the map reverse. So now let's bring back the subtractive pipe. And you can see, well, this should remove the rest. We look at it. Need some transformation. Click on it, attachment, position. Now it's quite hard to see. That's actually add that to the subtractive pipe first. So we can see what we're doing. Double click the subtractive pipe. Come down to add section, and then add this one. And then hit OK. So that's in there now. Come back to model. Draft is still showing. Press the space bar. So we've got that there. And as we can see, well, we've got this raising up a bit, but that's fine. We can move this in if we wanted to. Position along the X. It's up that one. Up that one to 1.9. So let's do 1.2. Let's go for 1.3. There we go then click off. So we've got that there. 
So as you can see, we're starting to build up that shape and we can make some amendments with these and change the positions. So let's place along the Y and we can get the shape that we want. So minus 0.5. There we go. So we're starting to get the shape that we want. And now we can concentrate on the teeth going this way. First of all, let's come in, press the space bar on all of these profiles and on the binder. So we have that there. Let's come back over to the part design. And let's start on the teeth. So we're at the point where we want to create the teeth, but there is a check that I've forgotten to do. And that's to check for tangency across mirroring. So if I take this surface and mirror this, this attractive pipe, and start from the pad, work our way down. Pad, draft, binder's not an operation, so we go straight to the attractive pipe. And we use the mirror or the part design. Apply and pattern, mirrored. This mirrors over to the other side. Let's hit OK. Straight away I can see we haven't got tangency. And look at the back, you can see we've got this point. That's smooth that out. So let's start with this feature here. How do we smooth that? This was originally from the pad. So if we look down, we can see the pad here. Double click that sketch, bring this around. So adding tangency for this will be as simple as placing a line in here because we got to create this transition, a straight line across here. Hit escape, right mouse button, get the mouse pointer back, select that line and straight away make it construction geometry. That's important. I'm going to make this line symmetrical to this vertical axis with symmetry constraint. Next, take the line and this point and make it point on object constraint. Then we take the line and finally the arc and use tangency. Okay, that. What we've done, you can see the arc comes around and comes into here. So it starts straightening at this point. When this is mirrored, the mirror will take on this straight part and it will create that tangency across there. Let's hit close and see what happens. We get a much cleaner transition between those two. So you can see that there. Click on mirrored, click refine, set that to true. That will remove the center line and you can see that is much better going along there. That's work on this side, this curvature here. This is to do with the profile. So it needs some profile manipulation in there. To do that, we need to go back to the profile. So it's this profile here in the subtractive pipe. Press the space bar to show that. Now, if I click that sketch, that clone, the profile and come into the attachment because it's attached, we can change the angle. And if I decrease and increase this angle with the up and down arrow keys, I can get this into a position that'll make that a better translation across there. There we go, we've got that. That's not good enough, so let's come in. Sorry, a better transition, not translation. And we come into the angle. Let's have a look at the position, the X. Push that into, into the body, a bit more angle. That's looking better already actually. Might not need too much of an angle. Minus 12 at the moment. Let's go minus 11. Let's go minus 13, minus 14. And I think, press the space bar on that. Get rid of that. That's looking much better. 
and we can do some fine adjustments so the position x let's bring out to three and there we go i think that will do me so i'm going to delete the mirror now take the mirror and hit delete so we've got nice tangency going across that object now i've dealt with the tangency that's deal with the teeth for that i'm going to create a sketch on this face new sketch it attaches to that face and we're going to create some teeth in here so you would think with this that you would rightly assume really is that we create a teeth or a tooth single tooth like so get it positioned where we want the tooth the start tooth and that sets some distance between here of millimeter and let's say we attach it import the geometry of this point hit escape and we take this line and this point and use a point on object constraint so we've got that there if we pocket this and then do a linear array that's okay that pocket take the pocket use the linear array then this is not going to work for us let's change the length because this is not 100 millimeters you can see two occurrences are not showing on the screen only one occurrence let's set this to 50 mil there it is there and we increase this concurrence to 10 you see we get a straight there and we need a curve so we need it to curve around this way so if you want this type of style, then you can do it this way. But what I need, let's delete that pocket, is I need to create a curvature that follows this edge or is in relation to this edge. So what do we do? Well, part design doesn't have that type of tool there. So I'm gonna use the draft workbench here, which is 2D drafting tools. I'm using 2D at the moment with the sketch. So if I use 2D drafting tools, it's going to be safe. So first of all, I want a path for this to follow. So let's click on the surface. That's the attractive pipe. It's a planar surface and create a sketch. A sketch has been added to that surface. So you can see it there, that draft surface. Let's zoom in and create the path. I'm going to use endpoint and rim point arc and again i'm going to take a path and we'll connect up to this vertical axis a point on object constraint and it'll be easier for add some angle in here so i can see what i'm doing there we go and we'll go something like that let's add tangency so i'm going to take a line and draw a line with a horizontal constraint automatically added hit escape to get the mouse pointer back take this point and this line make them point on object constraint change the line to construction geometry take the arc and the line make them tangent and okay that we can control that arc with the line and we take this point this point this vertical axis and use a symmetrical constraint in there so we have that there we can control that and now we can add the necessary teeth to this path let's close that so i've got this sketch and this is where i'm going to start it on this point here now i'm going to show you something that's going to happen we're not going to move this yet if I come over to the draft workbench, let's take the gridding off. This is my tooth path. So we rename that to tooth path, tooth path sketch. And this one is my tooth. So 
So we have the path and the tooth. We take the one that we want to array and control click the path. We can do that from the screen as well. Modifications, array tools, and we come down to path link array. Now you see what's happened. It looks like it's gone the wrong way, but what's happened is because this isn't on the point of origin of the sketch. It's caused the sketch to actually be arrayed in a weird way. That's come into that tooth sketch and move it. So at the moment, it's one millimeter away. Let's delete that from this point here. Let's click on that point and delete it. We don't need that. That frees this sketch so I can move it. We we'll still need the one millimeter distance. There we go. So we've got a horizontal length constraint in there. And we take this point and this point and use a point coincident constraint there. So that's coincident to the sketch. So this is the sketch, as you can see, running here. This is coincident to that point, and we've got this length. Now let's make sure it's nice and long because it will just come out and intersect out of this edge. Let's close that. See this change straight away. It's gone along this edge, and we can click on the path array, come down and look at the count, and set this to something like 30. There we go. And we've got that in there. So this is going to be a pocket. We can't drag this path array into the body. It's outside the body. Click on the body, collapse it, you can see it's outside. Let's go back to the part design. We need to reference this path array inside this body. How do we do that? Well, that's where the subshape binder comes in handy. We need to first select the object that we want to bind. We don't select the edges, because if we do, then we bound to those edges. When we change the path array, the subshape binder breaks. The body is active. When I come out to part design, create a sub object shape binder using the menu there, we can see a change has happened. If we look inside the body, look down, we've got this binder here. It's got faces at the moment which we can remove. So we take the binder and we need to do this, that make face, let's set that to false. And if we look down, we've got the path array here, press the space bar. So we've got that there. Any amendments to the path array will be reflected on the subject binder. You can see that there. So now we've got the binder that is basically a link to the outside object, this path array here. If we take the binder now and use the pocket, we've pocketed it all the way through there. And we can go through all, if not. Hit OK. We can make some adjustments if we wanted to with the path sketch, this one, and decide where this is going to go. Let's set some distance. So take these two. Set a distance. And we want something like 20 millimeters there. And we'll take this and pull this up to about here and hit close. Everything recomputes. And that's hide that path. So now we've got this, we can do our mirroring. Let's collapse all these. So we're looking for the operations, the features, the pad, Next, the draft, control click that. Next, the subtractive pipe, the binder is in a feature. It just binds something that's outside of the body or creates a bind between edges that we can use as a single object. We got the two sketches, they're not features. 
the binder again not feature the pocket is part design plier pattern mirrored we wait for freecad to do its work and we have that mirrored across there now you notice that we've got this gap in here let's okay that so we've got this gap in here what do we do well we have to adjust the path array let's place this as 32 and click off and you can see well that hasn't changed anything so we need to place the path a bit forward forward more on this side let's have a look at the tooth path it's on that line there so i want to release it from this line let's have a look so we've got a symmetry constraint in here which connects it to this edge let's delete that so we've got that there should be able to move this now we can't so we've got something else in here point on object constraint let's delete that so now well yeah we can move that now it's going all over the place let's take this point this point and this middle point make that symmetrical and we can pull this out a bit more so we've got this back under control let's hit close and now we've got our middle tooth in there of the cone finally if we wanted to we can click on the mirror and set the refine to true and that will remove any faces along the same plane once that's done it's recompute and then we've got our cone and this is the finished article and if we come up to the view draw style shaded we can see we've got a very similar looking comb if we go back to the comb we do have some extra features in here we have this groove that runs along here and that's very simple to do we can create a sketch along this plane and pocket this in just straight from that plane pocket down and we'll get that groove in there but that's how to create a more complex comb rather than just standard extrudes and using a standard linear pattern for the teeth so i hope you found that interesting i hope that's helped on patreon i hope that's helped everybody out there in figuring out objects like this when you first look at them they look very simple but under the hood they can be much more complex than we first thought thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon if you like what you've seen you want to donate to the channel then you can do so via ko-fi or coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash m-a-n-g zero or via paypal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash darren b e stone i also run a patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos i thank everybody that's donated so far it really helps to keep the lights on so i can produce more content and also expand the channel Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.